Coffee Experts Club. Pretty excited to see everybody today. Excited to continue on our journey. Um, yeah, so as Hudson, you guys are start talking about. Buddy, I get excited. Don't you worry. I'm like probably the most, I know you watch a lot of cool shows. I'm probably the coolest thing you're going to see in a lot. Just kidding. <laughs> All righty. So talking about Coffee Experts Club today, we're still winding up um, People 2.0. And we're going to talk about some things that are pretty cool, just as a, a preface and, and a reminder to everybody that as we come into these meetings, especially when we say something like um, 2.0, our desire is to continue to level up. You know, for all of us, I think I, I, all of this, looking at this group and looking at the people that are here, I think you guys are all super aware of this. But if you're not growing, then you're shrinking, you know, like if you're not if you're not taking ground moving forward, then you're losing ground and moving backwards. And so I think that. For us and, and the evolution of Coffee Experts Club, we want to always make sure that you're leveling up. And 2.0 is just a symbol for us of saying, hey, we're going to take you into some next level cool stuff, which is, um, which is, I think, a great benefit. So actually, we're jumping into Finance 2.0 today. So Tasha's like, dang it, Finance 2.0. I barely liked Finance 1.0. So anyway... Uh, <laughs> It's not going to be as boring. It's not going to be as boring. I promise. Actually, it might be as boring. It might be even more boring. Because today we're, <laughs> we're going to jump into some other stuff. But I will say this: um, such good tools. And Tasha, I know this is a tool you're familiar with. Ben, obviously, this origined with you. Drew, you've rolled these out for quite a few different people, so you're familiar with them. Um, but we're going to talk today as we jump into um, Finance 2.0 about dry goods ordering. Um, and the free gift this month is the dry goods ordering sheet that. Ben, the Clatterbuck um, of all Clatterbucking clan um, created <laughs> um, based upon need and based upon helping managers understand what it is that they're ordering. And I think the biggest thing is this, right? Finance 1.0, we talked a lot about cost of goods, understanding cost of goods, but how can you get your people to the place of controlling their cost of goods? A lot of these people are just ordering based upon gut or ordering based upon something that was taught to them once or ordering based upon what their understanding of need is. And sometimes that can just be, they don't want to look like a jackass. So they're going to order more stuff because they don't want to run out of stuff, right? And they think they're doing right by us to do that. The downside being that we're locking up a lot of our finance in the cost of goods into our location. So the best way we can do that is to give them good tools and then coach based upon those tools. So today I thought that the mighty Drew Moody um, could show us the dry goods ordering sheet and then we could have some conversations around that today. So, Drew, are you ready? I'm ready. I mean, you got a good haircut out of it. Thanks, thanks. Love it. <laughs> very Top Gun-esque today. I just want you to be looking very, very elite. Yeah, I remember when I was a fresh manager thinking, oh, the more smoothie mix, the better. You know, I'm never going to run out. I'm going <laughs> to line, line my store with it, use it as like props on the shelving in there. So it looks like decorations. I didn't know the difference yet. I think, right, it's all on origin, origin of understanding of the pain point, right? If you, yep. the manager, are thinking, I don't want to look stupid to my regional, then of course <laughs> you're going to overstock your store. You know what I mean? Like, and you, it feels good because other managers are coming to you when they run out and you feel like I'm the storehouse. I actually yep. do good. It's without realizing, no, that actually is affecting us because you're carrying too deep. I was just felt like a team player because I had, you know, just enough to give everybody extra too. Yep. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, so the dry goods order sheet, um, it kind of was birthed off of that exact thing of me having way too much stuff. Um, we, we tried to shift away from a more primitive version of using paperwork, um, and the memories of our managers, the flawless memories of our managers. Uh, we want to create something that would cut costs and, uh, control inventory and teach managers all in one go. You know, if we can teach people. And cutting costs is like a, a, a priceless thing. Um, I remember when I was approached to become, uh, when asked, when Wes asked me if I wanted to be a manager, and my answer was no, not really. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've I've heard all the horror stories. I've repeatedly, you know, heard all of these things, these these difficulties that managers deal with, and he's like, no, no, it, it'll be great. Um, and my fears were realized after grand opening day when I had so much stock that it wouldn't fit on the shelves and it was just in the back and they're like, Hey, you know, all right, organize it, make sure that you don't use the wrong things and make sure you, you know exactly what you have. Um, and then I went to do ordering for the first time, probably. And I, it took me forever. And I, I remember texting Ben and being like, bro, this isn't, 
this is not this is not the way if this is taking too much time and if it's taking me time it's taking everybody time so how can we come up with something um that's more robust that can teach you know not only myself but everybody around me um how to do things better and more quickly so and before you jump in to take us a tour on things maybe ben you want to speak to that a little bit too like what was origin story for you like ben obviously overseeing 16 stores like seeing numbers like get crazy you know at a pretty large scale maybe you can have a conversation about that yeah it was um it really was exactly that scenario and the converse of that too like managers just like you know we would have manager meetings and it was constant complaints of i have to run to the cash and carry to grab this i ran out of this i'm running out of this i stole this from the other thing. And then the bookkeeper was also getting on my case about, hey, I don't know who's paying for what from all your stores. Like, because yep. everybody's swapping, you know, smoothies and syrups and paper products. And so like one store is buying for like two other stores and that store next month is buying for this store. So it was really just sort of like a, a combination of all three of those. And finally I was like, we have to, we have to get a handle on this. <laughs> Like, I mean, even if I, because I, as a manager, I knew how difficult difficult it was to order. And there was even times when I would over order things or under order things. I was like, man, if I'm, if I'm supposed to be the, the operations guy now, I had <laughs> trouble doing it. And we still have this issue. I was like, this, there's got to be some way um, to do it. And that's where, where this tool came from, um, uh, came from that. And also, I mean, there's, there's great uh, inventory platforms out there. Um, tools that you can use. Uh, I think Hot Schedules even has a built-in, like some sort of a sister app of you know running your inventory. But those are expensive. They can get really expensive, um, and they're very. Um, they take a lot of time to onboard your people with. Um, so it was sort of out of this like desperation of okay, I got to come up with something free, semi easy, something they're used to working in and working around, um, and it kind of evolved over. Um, a couple of years to, to, to the point where it's at now. And I felt pretty comfortable about it. And then it was like, after it was done, it was, I got the, the, the constant, the sheet doesn't work. The tool doesn't work. It doesn't work. I was like, it, it's only as smart as you are <laughs> filling it out. So if it doesn't work, it's probably you. I, and I will say this, like, obviously complexity, the downside. So the reason why everybody defaults to simple is because it's simple, right? Like dummy proof, right? Just make it dummy proof. And that's what everybody will always tell you. The downside is it's really hard to make it dummy proof and cost effective. You know what I'm saying? Like you're going to pay for it somewhere. So if you're trying to make it simple, then you can't cry about there not being the complexity for people to be able to track things. And then the flip side of that is when you go to a more complex solution, it's going to be confusing, right? Because it's, it's different. It's new. So I would say, as we get into this, and Tasha's like nodding her head. She's like, tell me about it. Drew's tried to fawn brown me into this thing forever. Like it can be, it, it's different. It's different. You know what I mean? So it can be confusing. It can be overwhelming. The setup is not, it's not always the easiest in the setup. Um, you know, obviously collab team would, would love to help with that at some, at some point, if you ever need help setting it up, like we don't want to just drop tools on you and be like, Hey, hope that works out. So you know, like you could always grab a, a project block with the collab team. We'd love to set it up for you for your business. But I will say this is um, if you're not growing, you're, you're shrinking, right? Like if you're not taking ground, you're losing ground. And I think that this is one of those things that we found really, really helped us, especially when you start building into things like incentive matrix, when you're going to start incentivizing your people by the amount of money they save and drew is over ordering at his store thinking he's going to be Joseph and the Technicolor Dreamcoat with all of his like storehouse for all of Egypt. And he's, he's saving everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like the downside to having one guy that's going to over order like that means that his incentive matrix is going to just go to shit. You know what I mean? Like it's not, he's not going to make his percentages because he's over ordering his cogs are awful. He's not going to make his incentive bonus. And that's not fair. And so how can you get everybody into a place where they realize, no, no, no order for yourself, be lean, have some sort of backstop that's affordable, that's not going to break the bank, but don't overdo it. But when you start talking about that kind of complexity, there is some kind of complexity. And the benefit of it on the other side is you get to be leaner, be more profitable, and reward your employees that are living up to the standard you're setting. So as we get into this complex document that Drew's about ready to take us in on a tour of, come with an open mind, realize something new is always new. Something complex always looks a little complex, but I promise you, this isn't like, this isn't our first rodeo. 
Like we're not just rolling this out at the first location. We've worked through it with all the managers that have frustrations with it, that get overwhelmed with trying to do something new. And we've seen people come out the other side and really benefit from it. And Drew, I, I'd love for you to share your story. Even like, I know this wasn't your favorite tool when Ben first rolled it out to, and you weren't like, you were squawking about the pain point, but then Ben rolls out a tool and you're like, what the heck is this? No, like, <laughs> it's a frustration. so with no further ado, Drew, you can go wherever you want to go with it now. It, it's hard to win when it's, it's, it's too simple. I don't understand it. And then I get a, a tool and it's too complex. I don't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So here we, uh-oh. Uh, it said that I am not. Oh, it's because we're on. It's because we're on HQ. Sorry, sorry, guys. All of the tech fun. Old Let man is up. tech. All mm -hmm. participants. You have things set up. You know what I'm saying on your usual account, and then when you move away from that, that's what you get. Okay, Drew, try now. All right. Here we go. So here's the beautiful, flawless. <laughs> perfect smart ordering sheet um now it, you know i know it looks it looks like it's got tons of bells and whistles uh really hard to understand but no in, in all reality it's it's quite simple once you get the hang of it um once you play around with it once once you get your hands on it and kind of <clears throat> fool around with um numbers and the formulas um, you get pretty you can get pretty good at just kind of troubleshooting which is kind of every time every time we roll this out every time like like with tasha as aaron was saying we, we went over this a few times and you know there's always new questions and uh but it's you know trial and error so if you do get this tool my you know my uh my advice is to keep a template that you have not messed with at all just in, just in case in your toying with it you do mess up some sort of formula um it's a lot easier to have something that you can just, okay, well, I messed that up, just delete it. Let me go back to my original. Um, so there, you're going to see the, uh, there's five uh, main, I'm going to do him, there we go. You're going to have five main uh, portions here. You're going to have the inventory, the ordered, the taken, the added, uh, previous week used, and then this, this area over here, which is kind of, it works in tandem with itself. So I, it's kind of its own thing. Um, inventory is, obviously where you're going to be taking your inventory, uh, the things that you count in your store. And uh, this is, you know, it seems, it seems like a, a, an odd point, but managers should be counting everything all the time, even throughout the week. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've gotten texts from people saying, Hey, we're out of almond milk. And I'm like, Hey, did you check, you know, over here? And if there's like, Oh my gosh, we actually have three more cases. Um, so inventory, it's really important to for your managers to be aware all the time. Even if, even if they hand this duty off to an assistant, um, just to be paying attention, just, just to create a habit of kind of knowing exactly where stuff is in your stand. Uh, and then you have your ordered uh, category here. It's a generated number based off of um, par levels and uh, order habits. And I'll get into the formula momentarily. Uh, taken and added here uh, has many, many benefits. Uh, feeding the formula to keep track of what's taken. Um, say like you ordered extra strawberry smoothie mix in, in my case and another store needed like three or four of them well then i'd put that number here and add it and if i didn't order enough strawberry smoothie and i had to borrow or you know steal because we didn't keep track of it then uh <laughs> that's what that's where i'd put that number you have your use category which keeps track historically of what you've used from the previous week now week one uh you wouldn't have any data and so it kind of plays off of this number that i that I generated over here, this, this fictional number over there. Uh, and then your ordered, your inventory and your order. Um, it feeds the week one numbers from the previous month. So like I said, if this is your first time doing this, you're not gonna have any data there. Um, and that's, you know, obviously, okay, that's kind of, you have to start somewhere. Um, but if you do, then it's, it's gonna be numbers imported from the previous month sheet, uh, which gives a smart sheet a basis of somewhere to start. Uh, now, I want to highlight the formula for the PARs first. So a PAR is what we... You might need to zoom in a little bit, brother. Like, I know you're trying to show us all the different things, but if you, like, if you want us to see that, I mean, like young eyes, you know what I'm saying? I know I, know I look real young. Um, How's that? Uh, we all know Aaron does all of his work from a tiny tablet. Wait, do you need... Yes, is that yes that's beautiful right there. That's actually <laughs> perfect. Go. Only needed 350% Zoom. Oh, man. <laughs> Just for the formula, then you can back it out. 
the four, okay yeah, yeah yeah okay so um a par a par level is you know obviously what we've determined specifically for uh, a certain product uh the a weekly need for and then kind of preparing for any influxes of extra orders of it so if you know you normally use four in a week um then you know you par five so you have an extra bottle just as a you know as some insurance uh so the the par level is the number right here this number two is what we want to add on top of say our natural orders like i said four um and it's this number this number here is pulled from your previous week use number which would be your six uh plus your par minus what you still have left over uh, and that's going to generate the number that you want to order for that week. And so, yeah, it is, it's a smart sheet, but like Ben said, it's only as smart as the person using it. So um, like doing rep, reps, repetition, um, playing around with a sheet, that's, that's how you're going to get real good at this. Um, and even still, you know, we're still learning stuff and, and tricks to make this sheet better. Okay, so uh, if you, should, you should go all over all that one more time, just because like reps for the sake of repetition and, and make sure people understand like what okay. you mean by those different things, because you're doing awesome. But I think we're all so comfortable with it and we're so used to seeing it so that it comes second nature. So and if I'm if I'm still in your thunder downstream, brother, tell me I'm still in your thunder and you can circle back on it. But I think it's reps good. are great. It's all good. So the sheet is it's built to essentially do a lot of the footwork of looking over your records. Uh, and determining off of average order numbers yourself what you should be ordering. Um, so the way that it, it functions is this this order number here is found from uh, what you've used in the past uh, minus what you have left over, essentially. So I'm sorry, what you ordered in the past uh, minus what you have left over. So uh, plus plus your par number. Sorry, my sheet my sheet just went janky on me. Um, it's because I'm zoomed in. It's because I'm zoomed in so dang It far. is, and you can zoom back out. You don't need to. If you need to tell me, I don't want to throw off your, I don't want to throw your mojo off because of my eyes. Go ahead. No, it, it, it's cool. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's going to take constant adjusting. It's going to take constant attention, um, because as the you know as the seasons change, uh, as you know you have events going on in in town, um, you're going to want to adjust this par number here. Um, so that you're not over ordering or under ordering. Um, the nature of inventory is that it's really fluid. It's always changing. Um, you're never, you, you almost don't know what to expect sometimes. Um, you can be fully prepared and still order 10 extra bottles of something on accident just because suddenly people don't like almond syrup, um, something like that. And so this sheet is almost fluid in a sense that it's, it's really customizable. It's, you can be constantly changing it and constantly updating it. Um, and it works really well in tandem with obviously say like a community, like a community newsletter that's telling you, you're going to have extra 10,000 people coming past X store. Um, and, you know, depending on what the event is, you can almost kind of determine what you're going to sell more drinks of. Um, so you can go in here <clears throat> and change your par levels accordingly. And I'd highly recommend continuously doing um, things like that uh, or touching base with your managers. Um, having, you know, your weekly meetings or bi-weekly meetings to know what you're selling more of so you can go in and adjust those bars for them. Because we almost found out, well, we definitely found out, you know, you can teach managers this a hundred times, but you probably don't want them messing with formulas um, because yeah. ordering inventory is a lot different than messing with a formulated spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. uh, it just doesn't come naturally. So it's something that you have to obviously work at. Should I do it? Should I do a third rep, Aaron? Should I go one more? No, that's good. I think you're doing it. And just pars is just just give us a definition. It's just what we what we suggest you have on hand. Is that exactly? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So a par, yeah, a par level is what you use um, generally in a week or biweekly, when however uh, your order system works, uh, plus whatever you determine you need back stock, just in case you know you run low. Um, and that's how we determine the par levels. Perfect. And that really is going to be, again, like that's why it's it's, it's a semi smart sheet because that's going to be totally individual per location, per company. Because like with roasters, we had one of our main selling drinks, the chocolate macadamia nut was a syrup. So most of the shops, that little middle number, they'd have you know, twenty four bottles ordered on top just to be safe because if if they ever got hit, it was always hit. It was always that syrup that was gone first. If your coffee shop doesn't sell that, chocolate macadamia nut syrup isn't going to be 
that essential to you. So your part isn't going to be that huge. Your part might be nothing. So you don't even carry that. So, so it's that's where it's sort of super customizable and it needs to be customized per what you actually offer. Um, strawberry smoothies may not be a big thing for you as a coffee shop, but um, butterscotch lattes might be huge. So you want to adjust this to sort of fit how your company's menu works and, and really what you sell most of, even, even in the individual shops within your company. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, and I mean, if you don't adjust your bar levels, it's kind of like what we've talked about in the past of not adjusting your schedules. You know, it's just money you're leaving on the table. You know, you can go two, three weeks and have an extra 14 bottles because um, your manager had, you know, other things on their mind. Um, and maybe your regional wasn't looking into it too hard or you don't have a regional. Um, but little, you know, diligence, your diligence on these types of systems goes, goes so much further um, than obviously not having diligence. Okay, so the way that this sheet communicates, um, so week zero here, as I said, it's important. Wait, uh, Corey's, Corey's got a question. Look at Corey raising his hand like such a good oh, wow. Look at that. <laughs> he was like, I thought he was wanting to give me a high five. I uh, thought you were, uh, here, I'll show a little love. Yeah, too. look, handsome love. Hey, I'm so I I'm was curious. Wondering what that was. Yes. Yeah, you see your your little reactions bar down on the bottom. You can like raise your hand, put it back down. I mean, you know. Um, does this keep record of like what your weekly use is? So you can look back at that and, and kind of have an ongoing history of going, okay, we seem to be pretty consistent each week. We're using 10 bottles of this, 15 bottles of that. Does it keep a, a history of that? Yeah, that's so, your previous week use column there. Yep, cool. exactly. Um, this, so each of these sheets, week one, two, three, four, and this one has a five, five week template. Um, they communicate based off of each other. Now this one isn't fed from anything, but over this, this area here. Um, but when you get say all the way to week five, uh, I, can, you, can you see the formula? Is it, do I need to zoom in? Um, it's based off of the previous weeks for communicating gotcha. with it. It looks complicated, um, but it's, you know, it's, but it works. <laughs> There's beauty and complexity, right? Each, each sheet is building on each week's worth of sheets. So cumulatively, it's telling you how much you've been ordering throughout the weeks. Exactly. So, then, so in other words, this is helping you to make those par adjustments if right. needed, even on seasonal basis. Mm -hmm. yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, especially as you get, especially as you get deeper and deeper and drew, like, I feel like I don't know where you're going to go exactly. So I don't want to rob all your thunder, but especially as you start using these things year over year, because then you can go back to previous seasons of what you've been doing. And it helps you create some of that downstream as well. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And really the goal, I mean, one of the one of the main goals is obviously record keeping, so that you're not caught off guard by um, seasonal changes and trends. Because it's it's interesting if you're in an area long enough. Like we were in Tri Cities for a long time. It's it's interesting how people's habits are consistent throughout the year. How they'll stop buying one product and start buying another product, um, almost you know within weeks uh, of the same time each year. Um, so yeah, it, it does keep track of of those types of things. And there's also um, a summary tab that tells you exactly um, what you ordered and what you actually use. So you can compare those numbers um, at the end of the month, which I'll, I'll show you guys that here, here in a few minutes. Um, so yeah, so this, this uh, area here, the inventory and the ordered um, is going to be fed from these. If you were to just copy these numbers from the pre previous week and paste them here um, because the sheets uh, communicate within within there. It's like a self-contained communication loop. Um, if I had a like I say a January and then a February, you're gonna have to import those numbers from the end of January into this week one here um, to give you your basis. Um, so then you have the the taken and the added category here, which is it's 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 really nice um, for more more reasons than one. You know, if you need to add stuff from like a supplier or you steal, say your manager steals something from another manager, um, then you would put that number here. And one benefit that it's kind of, you know, it gets confusing when you have, you know, two, three, four, five, seven stores and the managers are taking it upon themselves to uh, make sure they don't run out of stuff by going to another stand. Uh, you can leave comments, obviously, in spreadsheets and you can say, you know, stand two took three bottles of almond. Um, and then, you know, your regional or you or your record keeper can go back and kind of consolidate costs um, 
and it's it's really nice, especially when your your managers know. Okay, I had to I had to add three bottles of almond. Um, and I'm obviously just using almond as a as a reference because it's the top one. Um, you had to add three bottles of almond, so maybe you should up that order uh, next week uh, or and go in and, and change that par level. So these also uh, are going to teach you where your par should sit at. Um, whether or not you're adding product or if you have extra products that's that's consistently being taken, we should probably lower those par levels. Um, again, that's going in here and this this formula here with that uh, middle number, the, the plus two, that's gonna be that number that you'd adjust uh, to make sure that your levels stay on par. Um, and if you do eventually get to the point of managers having incentives based off the of profitability of their stand, whether that, this in itself is an incentivization to be a better record keeper, uh, because you know you want that you want that incentive bonus. You know I don't want man, manager three, uh, you know, constantly getting more money than me because they're taking my smoothie mix and and it just looks like I'm using so much more product. Um, so it is an accountability tool as well, and it's incentivizing managers to make sure their books are you know clean at the end of the month um, and they know where everything has gone. I think that's I mean the real truth is and that is um, this kind of work is tedious. There's a reason why there's slippage in this kind of work, right? Because it's it's mundane. It's not very fun. Who wants to inventory their stand all the time? Who wants to keep on track of sheets as they're doing their ordering? But the reality is if you can gamify it and you can reward people based upon it and you can put challenges out there of like, who's going to have the best, in, who's going to have the best incentive matrix? Who's going to, who's going to do the best on how they're doing their cogs? Like, because I think that if you can gamify something boring, it, it helps people keep their attention on it. Otherwise, it's either you're going to be a taskmaster and continue to have to drill down and make it a discipline issue, which is just exhausting for everybody, right? It doesn't work very well. It makes you always feel like a dick. You know what I mean? Like it, it just is not a fun role or you can gamify it and then they self-manage themselves, right? Because all okay. you're putting the light on is their numbers. Like you don't have to do anything. The numbers aren't going to lie. And so as you put light on the numbers, it causes them to begin to focus on the thing that you used to have to come down on them hard for by just gamifying it. Like I know we jab at Tasha all the time about how competitive she is. She hates losing. Oh my God, I'm so competitive. It's not. <laughs> it's the best. I love her. But I think that it's like really in all honesty and Tasha does it even with her managers, it's beautiful in Reno where she'll like lean into it a little bit. I know they've been doing it with their car times, like getting that out there for how do you, who's got the fastest car times? Well, gamify that a little bit, like show everybody what the numbers are and let them feed off each other and let them talk smack and trash and like whatever they're going to do for the sake of keeping those numbers up. Maybe think of rewarding them, you know, with some sort of prize or bonus, but it keeps the mundane work from being just exhausting to maintain and to manage by just gamifying it a little bit. And it's, this is a really simple way because you're just allowing them to track. What did you take? What did you not take? And then that rolls up into what your cogs are and how uh, efficient you are with your incentive matrix. Well, and it also um, helps them develop each other's skill sets because I know that I keep tr I keep my own records a certain way. Uh, another manager, another person is going to do it a totally different way. Uh, and when they do, you know, when people when the managers do come together and they share their thoughts and their ideas and their talents for how they're keeping records, um, you know, they can develop whole, a whole new skill set um, based off of each other's advice, you know, each other's struggles and. Um, not wanting to text Ben all the time. Hey, how did we solve? How did we solve this problem? I forgot. I don't want to text Ben. Um, that happened a lot. I mean, that happened a lot with me. I, I won't lie. Uh, it, it takes repetition to learn things like this. Um, but yeah, it's super. Oh, that's nice. so good, Ben. Do you want to talk about that a minute? Because I think that we talked about this, and I love how 2.0 is like grafting in a bunch of concepts that we talked about earlier in 1.0 for all of these things. But one of those things was getting blown up by text, right? Like, or how are you communicating with your team? You know, and if if the answer is every single time text Corey, you know, or or text Tasha <laughs> or like Ben's situation, you, you've got 16 stands all asking you almost identical questions. Like, I think you can cut down a lot of that chatter if you'll just create streams of communication of how you want them to communicate. So I think that's a really good point, Drew. You want to talk about that a minute, Ben? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It, it, it all like there are so many, so many headaches that fed into the creation of this of. <laughs> yes, you're getting the 5 a.m. text because still, even though I refuse to answer you at 5 a.m. to sort of hint that this is not our communication channel at 5 a.m., <laughs> like still like, how do I order this? And I go, or how much am I supposed to order of this or this or that and the other thing? And so it was, it really is like, I'm trying to like help teach you guys how to be a manager by 
by giving you a tool on how to actually order your product. And like you said, turn, turn them into a merchant yep. who knows how to buy and sell products, not just go into the coffee shop stand or whatever and make coffee. And then last three minutes of their shift, they call in just like random numbers for, for product and actually, and they just copy last week what they ordered. Like, how can you be a merchant and how can I get you to not text me because you're not sure how many paper cups you should order because there's a, you know, a hockey game in town. <laughs> so, I mean, it really is like, and, and to be honest, like before this, before we had this or a tool, any other tool similar to this, it really is the fault of the, your upper management or yourself, if you're regional, like your people are just trying to do their job. And if they don't know how to do their job, they're going to constantly reach out to you for help. So it, it, if, if you don't like that, if it gets old after a while, then you should probably teach and coach and train your people. Okay, this is how I want you to do your job. This is how you can do your job. And if you don't have these tools to give them, then it's just going to be a constant like barrage of questions. What do I do here? How do I do this? Maybe you should take the time to go, okay, how can I coach my people and train my people better to be a little bit more self-sufficient? So they're not just always depending on me and they can actually be a really good manager and hit those incentive numbers and hit those cog numbers instead of just always like trying to put out fires myself because the managers don't know what they're doing. <laughs> it's good. Even though sometimes it's easier to just figure it out yourself yeah. pretty much most of the time. But when it comes to, you know, doing the same thing over and over for different managers and shout out to Loom. Thank God for Loom. I've learned a lot just repeatedly watching videos that Ben made for this thing. Um, yeah, back in the day. yeah, such a good it's free piece of technology. It takes a while to get used to. I won't lie. I mean, you, I make great looms. you make Just great looms. You. <laughs> no, you make great <laughs> looms these days. You guys will see you on the free sheet. We're going to drop in just a, a loom video of Drew walking you through it just for the basics so that you don't have to try and remember everything that we're, we're going over here. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so next I'm going to just touch base real fast on the summary page. Um, this is kind of what you were asking about, Corey, but in a monthly sense rather than a weekly sense. Um, it's going to tell you uh, how much you ordered. Now, these numbers are based off of, uh, there's no numbers in there. So it thinks you have zero every week. So you're ordering the par plus every week. Um, so they're, they're quite inflated. Um, and used does the same thing. It's zero every week. Um, so it's going to assume you used everything that you ordered the previous week, which was your par plus. Um, but yeah, it keeps track and you can average it out. Um, but this is also a really good tool to be like, oh my gosh, I ordered, you know, way too much uh, almond this this month. You know, I probably could cut down uh, an almond every week or two almonds a week um, to get that number to, to be a little bit closer to what I actually need. Um, yeah, it's just nice to, to teach the managers to have those skills. Uh, there's... But then there's so many benefits to using something like this. Uh, it cut costs. It, it can cut costs by obviously automating a lot of the work that the manager could do. And as we know, automated services can be a lot less problematic than having a human behind the service, um, especially when it comes to just simple tasks like record keeping. Uh, it can narrow down on any excess product, um, keeping the stand from becoming just a, a storage unit and a, you know, a supply store for other stands. Uh, as we know, sitting product isn't making money. It's just sitting money. It's just excess money that you could have had in the bank account um, or you could be planning on building more stands with. You don't even know you have it because Drew is sitting on four, 45 Strawberry Smoothie Mixes. <laughs> or could expire or could get damaged because somebody actually accidentally rams a cart, you know, a cart into it. And then like, then you just lost all that because it was just sitting too close to the floor. Like there's just, there's so much, I mean, there's just opportunity for waste. Uh-huh, Definitely. Um, another benefit is educating managers. Uh, what do you call them? What do you call them? Merchants? Yeah, true merchants. Yep. True merchants. Um, my primary focus since I've been in uh, upper level management of, of any form has always been to just teach, 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 um, bring all my information to the table. Um, and that way the leaders can be in the best shape uh, to deal with any issues that may arise. They at least have the tools there, they have the knowledge. Um, and if you're teaching, 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 then they'll be less inclined to text you at 5 a.m. Hey, what, what happened with this thing? And you're like, oh, I, told, I already told you like six times. Like you should probably know this. <laughs> um, and then they probably won't text. They probably won't text you again for that same problem. You say, I already told you six times. Um, but yeah, it, habits, you know, ha habits are hard to form sometimes. Um, plus shared information can be so crucial in understanding how you can make things better. Now, if, if one person took on the task of creating this sheet, 
by themselves and just repeatedly try to make it better and better and better. Well, it's, it's limited because uh, you don't have other ideas, you don't have other perspectives. So giving managers all the tools and then letting them ask questions and even uh, you can be, you be, you'll be wrong sometimes. I've rolled out tools to my team um, just within a store and they're like, okay, well, it doesn't work because of X, Y, Z. Um, and then we figure that out and we make it better and we make it better and better in each iteration. It gets so much better just because of all of the, the insights from the people actually dealing with the problem. So Ben, ben and on a higher level, isn't going to deal with the day-to-day -day problems of ordering um, with this sheet. And so, you know, the managers coming together and talking about this is what I dealt with this time, this is what I dealt with this time. Um, you can evolve much better solutions and even simpler ways to explain things because there's beauty and simplicity as well as complexity. I think too, uh, I think this sheet is totally, um, I mean, once you have it, you can do with it what you will. I mean, during our last little bit of time there, we had uh, Stephen, who was one of the other regionals, was assigning dollar values to each one of these products. And, and on the in like column R there, it would just sum up how much he ordered and apply that dollar amount in multiplication. So he was actually starting to run budgets for his store off of this because it would just run here's how much dollars you spent. So when the manager was ordering it, they'd actually see, oh, I'm spending X amount, I'm spending X amount. And then they would start clicking and they'd see a sum at the bottom of like, you spent, you know, $50,000. And he was using it that even as a coaching tool to say, hey, your COGS are about $10,000 high last month. Here's why you spent 50K, 50K, 70K, 50K. And he was using that even as a teaching tool. So there's a lot of things that you can customize into it to help teach your team in different ways the summary sheet, I was going to say earlier, is a great year-end inventory sheet. Yep. You can use for your team to count up how much they've gone through over the year, over the month, it's December to January. So there's a lot of stuff with it being an editable sheet that you can't really do with sort of self-contained platforms where they, they go, this is what it does. If you don't like it, I mean, don't purchase it, or you know, you're kind of stuck with what we created. And this, you can add in whatever you want. The the foundations there for you to add in whatever you want on top of it. I think too, like um, even at nine, we're talking like next iteration stuff, but um, bargaining power to go back to your vendors with, of you know exactly how much you've been ordering from all of these different things seasonally, not based on numbers they're giving you or having to go back and like, I don't know if you, I don't know how many vendors you guys have worked with when it comes to pulling reports, but it's kind of a pain in the ass sometimes where you're like, hey, will you run a report for me for how much I ordered for third quarter last year? Or they don't have a digital platform like that. So then you're talking about tracking through invoices and like manually totaling or like sometimes they're just not set up for that, but it's really nice to be able to go back to whoever you're ordering your syrups from and say, hey, I noticed that we've been ordering consistently this much every spring. I'd like to negotiate a better price based upon our number. And like you control all the numbers. Like you're not looking to them to give you your numbers. You're telling them how many numbers you're using. Like that's a lot of power to be able to come to a table with rather than just always presuming that your vendor is going to bring you back the number that you're going to negotiate with them on, you know, because mm -hmm. it, it's, it kind of sets the odds in their favor when they control all the numbers. And then I don't know if you guys, how many times you guys have pulled the things and realized, wait a minute, there's an inconsistency in what you're charging me per location, per what, per different line items. It's like, if you have different reps or different breaks in different areas, sometimes you're getting charged for the same line item, different amounts. And then it's like, wait a minute, who's holding them accountable for that? Like who's doing that kind of watching of things. So I think that there is some stuff that you can go from here where you can start watching numbers and watching spends and really indicate, wait a minute, isn't that store about the size of that store? Why is this store over here this much more and COGS this much versus this? A lot of times it can be a line different, like a line item difference in price, but it just gives you a lot more power in your hands. What I'm trying to say is there are iterations beyond this sheet that go beyond just ordering at the store level that is really beneficial for the company as a whole. Yeah, you can only make so many decisions based off of no data. Like <laughs> it puts data into your hands, be able to move to the next level of decision-making. This is how much I'm using. Oh, it looks like according to my order sheet, you guys actually shorted me on the three extra cases of paper cups. No, it wasn't our fault. Look, it's on the invoice. Well, I according to my sheet, I ordered three extra cases and you didn't send that. It's your fault, actually. <laughs> and do you remember, do you remember inventory before we started doing this? Like I just feel like inventory was such a burr in Ben's saddle. Like 
end of every year. Like Ben would be so pissed at the end of every year because he'd have to go and like hustle everybody to get their inventories in. The beauty of this is, no, no, no. Everybody's staying up on their inventory all the way through the year because it's controlling their orders. So then it's like, it takes back the power of having to do some big overhaul at the end of the year of having to inventory everything and it just being messy. You're just, it's just, it's all smart. Um, we've been doing a lot of talking. Corey or Tasha, do you guys have any, the thing I'd like to go back to Drew at some point is I, I didn't see that you, if you pointed out a way to leave comments on who's borrowing what from whom when things are being taken, I think that's a really good uh, feature on the sheet, but I just want to put that bug in your ear. Um, okay. Tasha or Corey, do you guys have any thoughts or any questions or any pain points that you've seen in your ordering that you're like, Hey, I could see this or like Tasha, I feel like you've been working with it a little bit for a while too. So if you're like, Hey, we have been working with it, but I've noticed this is kind of a pain in the ass. Like, is that we're always open to suggestions too, Tasha. Like, so I think anything that you guys have, you guys are both, I respect you, Tasha, a lot. And Corey, you as well. Like you guys have run a lot of coffee. Any comments that you guys have or thoughts? I'd love to hear. Yeah, no, the um, smart ring sheet is awesome. It took a long time to get used to. And I say that like I'm using it daily. I still <laughs> get used to it. Um, the one pinpoint that makes it really hard is setting the par um, for knowing how many are going to come. You know, it's not one, one meaning I'm going to get four bottles of syrup in that one, if that makes sense. So that makes it a little more tricky is dialing in how many is actually coming when you're setting that par and uh, down to little things like the sugar packets are, you know, I look at it as I know off of like a container, like how much when I get down to like a fourth of a container, that's what I need to order again versus I'm not going to expect the managers to count 300 little sugar packets and tell me how many <laughs> sugar packets are there, you know? So little, little things like that, it's just dialing in um, and half, like a bottle and a half got a little tricky or half of a container or that kind of thing. Yes. And I always, I always, in the little column next to the numbers there, like in column H, Mm -hmm. for, for all of our stores, I would always list either case or single, like for yeah. smoothies, like case, 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 case. When you're ordering this, remember you're gonna get six of these, not just one. Right. <laughs> totally, yeah. Who did we have that did that? That ordered that ordered <laughs> like some sort of it was like sugar-free big chain, and they thought they were ordering a bag, so they ordered like twelve, but it was <laughs> twelve bags each. So it's got like 144 bags of this like sugar-free big drink. They're like, what do I do? Yeah, like, yeah, bro, and then, a case and not a single item. Supply ordering issues. That was my biggest challenge, which didn't have anything to do with the smart order sheet. It was just yeah. trying to work with this and the times was just difficult. Yeah. So Tasha, you're nice. I did have my manager can't ev count every packet of sugar. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm joking. Honestly, you should, but like, well, let me know how many are there. You know, I mean, th th this has been mentioned before in weeks past, but this really is a, a business of of pennies, um, especially if you're you're a franchise. You know, the, those those margins are even less. So. Uh, literally every every number counts and you have to have some kind of par system to work with so you might as well use this one because of brainiac people like ben that make this kind of stuff thank god for him um, <laughs> where where it's it's a bit of plug and play but um honestly it's it's a business of pennies and the more and we've mentioned this before too that the more that you can equip your management the more that they're going to be empowered uh, to make those kinds of uh, decisions and track these kinds of things. So consistency is key, especially with a tool like this. You can't let it slip. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love that. Thank you. Absolutely. And I guess that that's another great thing. And we've talked about that before. Hold them accountable. Like they have to put in the work every week. They have to be doing it. Otherwise, you can't keep carrying items over and over. You have to commit and you have to do it right. That's good. I think one of the coolest things I saw out of the sheet too was that taking an added column because I feel like up to this point, you know, before we created the sheet, it was such an absolute freaking melee on who was taking what from where. And then like, whenever the, like Ben said, when the bookkeeper would get hot, like we didn't even have a good answer. We didn't even have a good reason like as far as where did it come from? Why did the store have so much? Why does the store have so little? Like, and then you go to the manager, they're like, oh, that's because this guy came into, oh, it's because I had to go. And then it's like, there was no rhyme or rhythm either. Like, it's like, yeah. sometimes it was just the closest store. Other times it was because there was like this other store they knew across town carried a bunch of them. And so they went with there. And so it was like, 
it was just an absolute myth. People had things written down on pieces of paper that we were trying to track down on who took what from whom on what month. And like going through here was cool, just like Drew's showing you there, where if something's taken, and Drew, you can take it over from there and explain, because I think that's a good, that's a good ad. Yeah, so you can say, uh, obviously, Aaron took three bottles of almond from me. Um, <clears throat> so then you know exactly who took what and where to put the, the uh, where your record keeping should go. Um, same thing for added. So you can you can even write in here, um, you know, you had to, you had to, I had to go buy three bottles from cash and carry or something like that because you get you're going to know that say i say i steal three bottles from another stand will cost exactly the same if i steal three bottles from cash and carry um well if it's free i guess if i steal it but if i buy three bottles from cash and carry um it's going to be pricier um so it's good to know exactly where you're getting your product from uh, obviously for so many different reasons um, you know the, especially because the like sorry i'm going to steal your screen real quick Drew, and yeah i'll then i'll let you have it back um yeah, so we've We've looked at this tool before remember going back to the delegate elevate like tool like if we're trying to keep you at your greatest brilliance you as the manager you as the regional manager you even as the owner whatever your role is we're trying to create your space to live here as much as possible um the way you do that is the things that you shouldn't be involved in should be and delegated out so we can elevate you up like that's the key and so when it comes to not wanting you to slog in the details of how should people be ordering how much should they be ordering who should they be ordering from who took money from what the bookkeeper is blowing you up as the owner about hey so which one of the stores took that da, 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 when you can just send them one sheet and just be like hey all the answers are there for you so sending this sheet to heather the bookkeeper and heather can come in here and see exactly what when what was borrowed from where what was purchased at cash and carry, all the answers are in one central spot. It keeps you from having to like chase all these loose, loose ends. And then once again, you become the, the choking point because you only have so much time. So how can you think about, I need to elevate by delegating down. Tasha, you raised your hand. I wanted to let you speak to that, yeah. So it was actually back on the other screen. This is kind of like a lifetime issue that I'm having right now. What was your guys' system for when managers actually returned items? And how did you know that they were fully getting returned? Great question. <laughs> you trust them with your heart. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is almost an, like an honor system, you know, if you were on your managers and, and that was part of the incentivizing is you know, you want your books to be good. So you get your bonus and somebody else doesn't get that extra 10 bucks or whatever it would be. Um, <clears throat> well, if they don't, well, it's kind of on them. Um, and unfortunately it, it's still, you know, there's no, there's no way to prevent every single little thing from falling through the cracks. Um, the best way I think to do it is to teach people and incentivize them um, to take the actions necessary to keep the books clean. Yeah. And it was really, it was really up to like, if I was running a shop and a manager came to me and said, Hey, you've got extra, almond syrup can i borrow three bottles and i say sure you better order me three bottles next week to bring it back because yeah. that, that is and my incentive going out the door we're not using the smart ordering sheet at this moment but we have a system in place and yeah i had a an employee a manager supposedly returned something and then that manager was like wait i unpacked that and that is not what you returned and she's like, no, it wasn't you. Somebody else unpacked that. I returned it. And so it was like a he said, she said. <laughs> and it's like, this is so awkward. Like, just do your part and be a good team player. Um, yeah. So now I'm trying to brainstorm ways to have a better honor system and hold people more accountable. Because I just, it sucks if it's coming out of somebody else's cogs and it's eating their bonus and somebody um, is constantly borrowing from them. It makes her never want to give out anything. She's, I have nothing to spare. Nothing. I think that's the key though, right there is what I've seen over time is um, is consistency. Like if that's happened once, it's going to happen again. So like you start watching for trends, you know, of, yeah, yeah, that's what you said last time though. Right. And we challenged this last time and there was some question and I gave you the benefit of the doubt. I'm a big, give them the benefit of the doubt, like take them at the word the first time, but like what, what's, what, what was Reagan's quote? Like trust, but verify, like, <laughs> like I'll, I'll trust you this first round, but I'm going to watch you next time. You know what I mean? So you may have gained me once, but wrong me once, shame on you, wrong me twice, shame on me that I was yeah. watching. So I think that watching for trends like that, Tasha, I would say if you're, if you're journaling it the way we're talking about journaling it in a smart sheet like that, then I think that, and there's a question, I think you can always like make a note in there too of, Hey, there was some question on where this went. 
and then everybody sees that happen because you can reply to different comments in there too. You know what I mean? Like, and I think maybe that's next level evolution is if somebody's borrowed something, maybe they comment back in that same thread. I returned this on this date to this person for the sake yeah. of just, if you start having some questions on who's doing what. Yeah, and ideally, ideally, if both of your managers are using this correctly, <clears throat> when a manager goes to, to my shop and they take three bottles, I input that three bottles were taken from me. That manager is then going to their shop saying they added three bottles. And at some point, we're going to want to adjust that because if they if they don't return three bottles back to me, they're going to start over ordering by three yeah. bottles of all one syrup you run up. So it's sort of it records it, but it also, that, that taken the added column, that starts feeding into your ordering. So if I add three bottles, the sheet's going to go, oh, you've got three extra bottles of inventory. I don't need to order more. If I take three bottles, you're down three, you need to order more. So managers, hopefully if they're a good manager, they'll be like, oh no, I'm messing, actually messing up my own ordering by not returning that product back to them and recording it in my order sheet. Yeah, the ultimate goal obviously is to have every store self-contained. Mm -hmm. um, and we did eventually start, you know, the, the accountability system we ran through with our managers was, you know, did you have to borrow product? Um, did anyone borrow product from you? And that was actually a metric that we kept track of. So it was more, more incentivization for them to keep track of their stuff.